here for another episode. Yeah, I feel like it's been enough of them now that I've I've stopped counting. I don't know what this is. Me either. I know we missed last week, and that made me a little sad, but it was kind of my fault. So, all good. You can you can blame me for it if you want to. There will be weeks that I have to miss. I'm sure. So, I'm just I'm still I'm still glad when we can do it though. These are good good chats that we have. Yeah. Okay. So today, let's just dive into it. I want to talk about Spotify Wrapped. I think it's amazing as a marketing tool and some people, most people love it. Some people love to hate on it and I just kind of want to talk about it as, as it is. And then like what it means for, for marketing and the Spotify brand. So. Okay. I've heard mostly love. I'm curious what I haven't, I I mean, I guess just the, is is, is the hate mainly just that, it like tracks you like people that you're you're exposed like what you Mm -hmm. think to and stuff is is there anything else besides that yes no it it all comes down to (laughs) private data collection okay and you know what we're gonna find out if our listening habits should be private or not (laughs) so let's i want to compare stats okay um i know you and i are very different in our taste in music i believe there might be a little bit of overlap but first i will say i'm gonna say how much i watched last year which okay little complaint what i listened to how much i listened but little complaint i have about spotify wrapped is it's not a full year i hate the fact that it comes out at like the beginning of december yeah, why and don't they from the little bit of research I've done? It sounds like it's it, it doesn't um, it goes through like October. It's like January through October. Okay. Like they're just compiling yeah. it like in the meantime until it comes out in December. Huh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. I've wondered because like I like I don't have my own record of my listening habits and like written down anywhere, but sometimes that I've gotten it and like. I feel like I've listened to that one song a lot recently and it's not on here at all. Like, so that makes sense then if it's not super recent. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my listening for 2022 was 27,988 minutes. <laughs> a lot more than mine. <laughs> I like you, music. You want to guess what mine is? Uh, since you said a lot more, I'm gonna guess like the six thousand range. Good guess. Mine was five thousand seven hundred and fifty minutes. Oh, okay. Which wow. actually, which which my stat says it's more than forty eight percent of users. So it's not a lot. But what is yours? What's your percentage? That was more than eighty. Mine was more than eighty percent of. I'm getting my money's worth for Spotify. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not like. It's not super crazy expensive, but it's actually, it's not like cheap. There's a lot of subscriptions to little apps and things like that that are a lot less than that. So you got to make sure you use it. But interesting. Yeah. So yeah, you definitely are, you're jamming a lot more than I am. I listen to music also sometimes like through YouTube, like music videos and stuff. We'll check out for fun now and then, or, uh, that's pretty much, I guess the only other way, otherwise maybe Spotify, but yeah, yeah. I'm nowhere near your, your level. (laughs) <laughs> I, I just, I like almost always have something on and uh, like driving in the car, it's always Spotify and never the radio. Um, working, you, I, I'll listen to Spotify while I play video games. Like it's just, there's always like, something. It's, it's kind of just the always on in the background type of thing. Cause my mm-hmm. one thing, I'm, I'm kind of weird and my wife makes fun of me. Well, she doesn't make fun of me, but like we, I have to make fun of her more often, I guess, because we, we have different listening habits. She's kind of like you in the sense that she'll always, she, she just likes to have like a, a beat going on in the, in the background. I'm very like lyric, um, dependent isn't the right word, but like I value the lyrics a lot. Not that I don't like songs that just sound good as well, but like if, if I don't have, if I, when I listen to music most of the time, I want to be dedicated to like, listen to it think about it, process it, like have, have the whole experience. If it's on in the background, I don't care if it's, it could be whatever's playing at the mall. It could be, it could be elevator music. Like I just don't really play it that much. Cause then if, if it's a good song, I want to say, hold on, I want to listen to that. And so 
I don't know. I'm weird like that. And so that's probably partially why I have less. I, it's not in the background very often unless I'm like working and I have like this writing playlist I listen to that's like no vocals and no lyrics, but. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I guess that makes sense. I, I, I do both types of listening. It just depends on the mood and what's going on. So sometimes I'll do really focused, like immersive listening and other times it's whatever. Do you have like is it your like saved songs that you play a lot or do you have like random playlists or like a uh, genre of like little groupings that you can just automatically go through or is it things you yeah, can save? I've got some of the, I've got some of those playlists and stuff saved oh I've built some playlists my wife and I have some playlists that we use for like road trips and stuff that we just like stuff that we know we both like mm-hmm. um but I'm an album guy really like I like to listen to a whole like a whole album when I can cool yeah you um if it's an artist I know I like already or I'm interested in, I'll usually give an album a one-time listen through, but then I won't go back if, it, if except for the songs that, uh, that stood out to me. So I'm not regularly listening to a whole album, but um, hmm. yeah, anyway, I'll try it out once and then I'll save the songs I like, if any, and those will be the songs I go back to. <laughs> if you're one of those guys, that drives me crazy. I can't do that. I can't. Albums are like snapshots in time and you have to like absorb an album as its whole thing. Or well, with some bands, but what you don't. Then I'd like a lot art so the artists I like, I like them a lot less probably because I'm like, I don't like all your songs. I'm sorry, but I like this one and this one, so I'll listen to those ones, but I don't know. Weird. Okay, okay. So how many do you did you write down how many songs? Yes. One thousand one hundred and eighty three songs. 4,136 songs. I think that checks out. With yeah, the like, yeah, I think it's almost the same ratio, right? I think you like, were like four times more than me in minutes and four times more than me in songs about... Maybe my math was off. I don't know if that was right, but... Hmm. Yeah. We'll check that at a little disclaimer. Yeah, in the comments if I... Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, top five bands. Who is your Who is your number one? This is like, I don't feel like this is like, like, so I'll answer the question, but part of the reason that, because what I do to, for my listening thing, because I'm kind of picky and I'm not an album guy, I do sometimes just do some exploration or I'll let some station, some, uh, what do they call them? Not stations, but like a category playthrough, you know, or a playlist. Most of the time when I like songs, I save that I have over a thousand like saved songs in my like own, my own playlist, like my like songs. That's what I go to most of the time. So okay. a lot of the same songs will cycle through and it's automated. So this is a big leap to say, these aren't necessarily songs I went through and I went and sought out and clicked on them the most. They kind of just cycled through the most in my playlist. Like, Oh, I, I wasn't even talking about the songs. I, I just meant artists. Or artists as well. Yeah. So okay. for All right. my answer, I took a screenshot of this one. So I'd write them down. My top five were... I don't like sharing this. Number one was <laughs> Mayday Parade. You know who that is? Okay. Uh, vaguely aware. Yeah. Oh, pop punk band. Yeah. Um, I think you've mentioned them before. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the main thing is I just have a lot of their songs saved in my playlist. When it, when it rotates and shuffles, they come up a lot. Um, and sometimes I skip because I'm not always in the mood, but they're there. Taylor sure. Swift, number two. <laughs> <laughs> Which my wife probably had a, a role in that because she shares the account with me, which she hardly uh-huh. ever. Knows. It's it's fine. You don't you don't have to pass off. Number three, thing. well, you, you make fun of me on that one. Number three, Avril Lavigne. <laughs> number four, Twenty One Pilots. Okay, okay. And number five, the Lumineers. Okay. I think thing. I like number five the best out of that group. I like them. They're probably one of the ones I saw. I, I sought out the most on purpose. And there's lots of. It's funny. I listen to lots of lots of genres. I listen to, you know, obviously some of this rock and pop and and stuff like that. But I also listen to the country. I listen to some rap. I listen to all kinds of different stuff, but not as consistently, I guess. And so they they didn't make the top five. But, um, yeah. What are your top five? Interesting. Okay, this will this will be interesting. Mine's a little eclectic. Um, 
I'm guessing I'm probably not going to know any of your top five. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. Yes. I think you've probably heard of at least two of them. Okay. okay. Uh, the Residents is number one. Residents? Like people who live there or residents? Yeah, people live. Yeah, people who live in a place. Okay. I don't the know residents. That. So they are there's a story behind why this is number one so they're a really bizarre like art rock group that has been around since the 60s and they continue to play and make music they're anonymous they they wear masks they wear these big eyeball masks with a top hat and and no one knows who they are in reality. There's some good guesses about who some of them actually were. I and really so probably know. over the course of the last 50 years, it's been a bunch of different musicians, Jeez. but uh, all under this name of the residents. Mm -hmm. And so I've been going through, they've got a huge catalog. They, they release new stuff like every other year. And I've been like slowly going through their discography and listening to every single album so can you tell that's why they're number one can you tell like it's it's, it's what they sing right it's not just instrumental right uh yeah yeah there's a vocalist and that one the vocalist has been pretty consistent okay i wonder if you can like tell a like, case hey, switched or yeah so how do they it's interesting. Is, it, is it just sing, can you see a mouth moving like how does it no. how does it, it's all just behind like a mask there's been the so they yeah, when I when I saw them, the the singer they weren't in their eyeball. I saw them play back in like 2016 in Salt Lake, and the lead singer was in like a cow costume. He was dressed up like a cow, and he had a really weird like cow mask on. You could see like the bottom half of his face. Okay. And all the musicians had like plague doctor masks on. It was. That's definitely unique and entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, I, you should look them up. They're definitely weird, definitely a little scary, but. I, I'm a fan. So that's number one. And mainly just because I'm going through this like discography yeah. journey with them. Um, but that was almost 1300 minutes with just that band. Wow. Yeah. That's more was, than I I'm in the 0.5% point, of their top listeners. <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, number two is Wilco. I think I've wow. seen in your office, you had like a sign from them. Like yeah, I've got a Wilco poster in my cool. office. Yeah. yeah. That's the only yeah. connection you have to them. Good. Just indie country rock. Okay. Yeah. Really good stuff. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers was number three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wouldn't have put that on you. That's good. good fun good. funk. Yeah. Uh, number four is Tool. <laughs> okay. They're probably my, they're, they're my favorite band. I'm, and the only reason they're not at the top is just because they don't have a ton of music. And so, like, you can only yeah. listen to it so many times. Even if you like stuff I really like, I intentionally don't listen to too much because then it gets annoying or stuck in my head. Like, I, I'll, like, leave something alone for a while on purpose so I can like it again when I come yeah. back. Yeah. For sure. So that, that's why Tool wasn't number one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then number five was Nine Inch Nails. Okay. So I actually know the last three of those. For all the okay. Um, Nine Inch Nails and... Uh, Wait, who did we just say? Tool. Yeah, Tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you even listening to me? Listening, you just but said I'm... they were my favorite band, and you forgot their name. Sorry, I'm, I'm not functioning well today, but yes, I forgive. <laughs> do you like? Uh, do you like um, Sublime? Yeah, yeah, they're fun. I just feel like that was a guess of a band I thought you might like. Yeah, they're they're good, chill, kind of stoner fun times from the yeah. 90s yeah okay we've all right we said we were going to keep it short this week and we haven't um let's i we could get through any other interesting like spotify stats you want to throw out from your wrapped uh, yeah, i no, feel like we should get to the meat nothing really specific stats other than a persona on there oh which yeah thanks i just don't I, I feel like that's the person who listens to the album i guess it's just because I think mainly the reason I had that is because I have so many Mayday Parade um, tracks saved in there that they cycle through a lot. And so it just seems like I fan club them, which I guess I do in that regard, but I don't like, 
I don't have like a bunch of their merch. I don't go to all their shows. Like I don't think it's super accurate for me. But anyways, I'm gonna have to get you a Mayday Parade shirt. I wear it. It's not like I'm embarrassed about it, but I just not. There's people who are definitely more in that fan club than I would be. But anyways, let's move on. Okay, I I was the early adopter, by the way. I can I could definitely see that. Just because I like variety, I guess. Mm -hmm. But anyway, okay, so Spotify wrapped as a marketing tool and its role in our society is interesting. It's only, it's been around since 2016, I think. Um, it's pretty like universal at this point. Like everybody knows what it is. It's like a holiday. Everyone's like, "Hey, Spotify yeah. dropped." Yeah, yeah, I, it, yeah. It, it is kind of like a big deal. Everybody posts their stuff. I don't. I didn't post mine. Um, I never posted. But it's a it's a big cultural moment every year when Spotify rap drops, and I know they've got their kind of end of year playlists for like the top songs and. Mm -hmm. everything over for all their listeners i wish they had the actual stats broken down but i couldn't find them but what do you think what, i mean in my mind the reason it's so interesting is everybody loves to know like kind of where they fall in the greater ecosystem of music listenership or just about anything that's why we like badges that's why we like the, the member school. points programs and stuff yeah well, yeah, even just like the silly BuzzFeed quiz of what kind of pizza are you? Like just that kind of stuff. It's just somehow to like to see, oh, I'm this type. Which one are you? And compare. That's just something people eat up. And so when it comes to I'm having, unique. Yeah, I'm unique. Or I'm not that unique, but I affiliated with these people that are also like me. Um, yeah, I mean, it's still unique, but yeah. So I think it's it's got so many built-in ways that help Spotify. One everyone is talking about them during that time. That's obviously good. But also connected to that is, let's say you are you don't have Spotify. Well, all your friends keep talking about their Spotify rap and posting about it, talking about it, comparing. And maybe you also like that band a lot too, but you don't have Spotify to like be a part or like to, to know if that was your top one or not. So it's like, I want to get Spotify so I can like be part of that. That's unique. The mm -hmm. shareability of it. The, uh, the, the fact that it's um, it helps you. Well, yeah. Anyways, never mind. Cut that part out. Train of thought lost. But yeah, <laughs> I, think it, I think it's a uh, powerful in that sense. It's to have it's it's a lot of free expo not free exposure, but like a, a reason people for people to talk about you, which brands you know thrive off and try to find opportunities for that. You just got to put someone's stats back in front of them, which a machine is calculating as long as someone's counting for you. It just happens on the back end. You let them know about it, and they all start talking about you. Mm -hmm. Good for as well. The yeah, artists. I would imagine the bulk of the work that actually goes into it is in designing the little wrapped story mm -hmm. program and then developing how it connects to the actual stats. But yeah, yeah it would be interesting to know how much they actually spend on it every year. But I know like even other companies have attempted to do a Spotify wrapped type thing. I think Apple Music does something called Recap. Um, I, I just found that doing research about mm. Spotify wrapped. I didn't know it was a thing. Had you heard of it before? No. And that's interesting. I want to know why. Why is Spotify dominated? I, one thing I didn't mention before that's a benefit also is that they, and this this connects to the controversy i guess if you want to call it that people who don't like what they're doing is they spotify had access to all that data everyone's listening stuff so that they can then produce some of their own their own content is based on your data so they can put things together like hey you want to know who the most listened to person was last year or band whatever it was last year we can tell you i mean based on spotify it doesn't calculate maybe apple has a certain demographic that really likes a certain artist that's different than Spotify, but you can kind of assume, you know, in the culture, 
this was the artist of the year kind of thing, or this was the song of the year based on this, or this was, um, or, or geographic things like that. They wanted to say that the Midwest likes this versus the South versus the, you know, and so they have lots of things they can play with to put together infographics or, um, or, or, or marketing as well. Like if you, cause even just share, what, what if you say, Hey, we spent, we spent a, a, I'm just going to round up like a, a round down actually to like a million and say they had a million people post about their Spotify rap. And 35% of those people were like in the West coast. You'd be like, Hey, hmm, why is everyone on the West coast posting about this and sharing people on the East aren't sharing about this. I'm just making this up. I don't know if this is accurate at all. That's something for you to be like, I, I want our marketing is going to adjust based on that. Cause we have that data, which is not something that's unique to music. I guess lots of people can have data, but the, the funny thing about Spotify is people are willingly giving that data whereas everything else is trying to block privacy don't follow me and spotify it's like tell me what i did all year yeah and honestly i think that's genius that is that is exactly why i i mean and i know they're making money off of it because like you said there's that fomo element where people will want to then sign up for it but even beyond that all of this data they're collecting while they're not, I don't think they sell it to third parties. It is used for their, like their ad platform. So if you're an advertiser buying into it, like the more data they're collecting, the better. And by incentivizing us as users to get something cool from the data that they're collecting, um, it makes us less worried about sharing it. And therefore, they've got a better set of targeting than maybe some other platforms do. Which I wish more people adopted that. This will be a funny video to play back in five, ten years if I am confused. <laughs> if things have gone haywire and I'm a super privacy, like don't track me at all person. But right now, I'm not. As of 2022, I'm not. Because I work in the space of advertising, right? And I know that... Yes, there are bad actors and good actors in every industry. But to me, it's like, I'm not going to stop getting ads. I can't avoid ads unless I go off the grid and live in the woods, right? And then I get advertisement. So the degree to which the advertisements are at least relevant to me and my interests, well, that's better than something completely irrelevant to me. Or is that the right word? Yeah, not, not relevant mm -hmm. to me. And so I'm like, there's some cases where I'm like, this seems sketchy. But most of the apps that ask if they can track me more... I'm allowing all that stuff. And I think that's maybe not the norm anymore, but it makes it, makes it easier to reach me. I, I often get things I'm interested in or that are relevant. And, and uh, so I, I wish more people who understand the value of how Spotify can customize things for them better would also allow other apps to track them more. Well, I mean, I mean, you and I are almost the same age or roughly the same age. I remember back when, Facebook first started to allow ads on their platform. And this is before I ever thought about being in advertising. And I remember getting like really bad ads. I remember getting stuff for like diapers or something <laughs> like it was completely irrelevant to like a 22 year old college kid, like didn't make any sense. And it was a bad experience. I hated it, but then yeah, sure. Ads might still be annoying even though like that's my job, but everyone needs to turn down our frequency. You can't, you got to cap that. I don't want to say the same at 25, yes. but yeah. <laughs> yes, got to work on those frequency caps, but man, I don't know. I'm right there with you. I feel like, I, I feel like I, I don't care if people have my data. I don't have anything I'm really scared of. I was reading, um, the, I'll link to it in the notes, but there was a, an article from Wired about the data that Spotify is collecting on you. And when I, basically what, what you're giving away in place for this wrapped product. And one of the things they called out was like, you know, maybe if you have a lot of kids songs in, in your playlists, like that indicates you're probably a parent and therefore they can use that for targeting. Um, or depending on the type of music you're listening to, they can probably group you into different demographics. So like, I don't know. I'm, 
maybe I am more in like the redneck heavy metal group than I than I actually am on Spotify. But like it, it could be it could be used to closer identify who you are based on your yeah user behaviors. But like is is that is that a bad thing? I don't know. I mean, everybody has their opinions. But and some people think it's who you are, as in like your face, name, DNA, like, and it's you. No one knows. No one's tracking you, the person. They're tracking you, the code, through your mobile device or whatever. Which again, I must. I, talk, I understand people who might not like that as well. But so many people think that it's like they're spying on you. They know you, and whatever they know about your online persona is attached to you. It can come out, and whereas it's like. No one's looking at a list and being like, Josh likes this song. Let's serve Josh this ad. It's just like an automated programmatic thing. And so again, I, I like I said, I get people might not still want don't want to be targeted in that way, but at least yeah. no, no one's like spying on you with your face and being like, This person yeah. this stuff. We're gonna tell everyone. Yeah, I guess that's that, but Yeah. Or at least that's not what Spotify is doing anyway, as far as we know. Yeah. But Man, I don't know, but even beyond just like the the reasons they're doing it, like the genius is just I just feel like it's genius. Like Spotify yeah. wrapped as a brand name is smart. We talk about wrapping up the year, that's a great word to use. We talk about I mean, it comes out in usually December, so or early December, and people are wrapping gifts. It's a, like a very timely word for so many different reasons. Um, and when you use a word like Apple Music recap, like you can't like recap is just it doesn't have the same yep. punch. Yeah. So yeah, that's the, that's the takeaway. Whether you hate it or not, I and mean, you can totally not want them to be tracking. But if you're looking at purely like marketing strategy it is a it is a well used opportunity i guess you could say yeah freaking yeah. genius yeah you're on spotify yeah we're fans now go listen to some resonance camden okay okay well okay. get weird with me today's sponsor is title jay-z would like us to remember that his platform also exists in the streaming music world. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Title records. Um, with an ad, how much do they sponsor us for? Um, I think like, you just close that. Not, maybe a, a couple extra streams or something. I don't know. Well, spots are still open. So we got some, we got some, some big hitters here in our, in our lineup, but there's going to be some open opening uh, sponsorship opportunities down the road. So again, if you want to be a sponsor, shoot us a comment or a message on social media. Um, and we would love to get you in the lineup and uh, help you bring some exposure for your brand through our brand. Rock and roll.